Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective. And today will be no different. Today, we're going to talk about eight things that cause you to overeat and crave unhealthy trash food. Okay. Now, I know a lot of us have eaten and afterwards thought to ourselves like, damn, I shouldn't have ate that. A lot of us have had a healthy choice in front of us and an unhealthy choice in front of us. And we don't know why we always choose the toxicity. And so we're going to explore that a little bit today. But before we do, let's get into the definition of what is overeating. I think that's important because the unfortunate thing is people don't draw a line of distinction between overeating and when overeating has become addiction. OK, overeating is the overindulgence past the point of fullness. OK, now, when does that become addiction? I'll tell you one of the, the greatest sort of tips that you can get to distinguish having one meal where you overeat versus now it's turned into addiction is the fact that when you try to stop and you can't. And a lot of people aren't honest with themselves enough to say that they can stop something. And so they'll say, well, if I wanted to, I could stop dairy, but I like it. OK, if I wanted to, I could stop eating all the processed carbs and all the chips or whatever it may be. But I like it. I love it even. OK, but if you were to compare the two, those who are addicted to illicit drugs and those who are addicted to food and you look at the symptoms and you look at the behaviors, they look pretty damn close, okay? The only difference is, is that food is the socially accepted addiction. That's the only difference between the two. Food is the socially accepted addiction. Not only is it socially accepted, but people will actually persuade, encourage, and support your bad eating habits. And why do they do that? Because they want you to support their own too with your own bad behavior. And so we'll talk about that in just a, a second, but it's important to know and understand this conversation isn't just about overeating. It's also about the addiction to unhealthy foods that are pilfering away seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years of your life, pulling it off slowly by surely. Okay, slowly but surely pulling it away. And not only taking off the number of years, removing the quality of years too. So you spend the latter half of your life or the golden years of your life suffering from high blood pressure and strokes, heart attacks, autoimmune conditions, which a lot of people are under the impression are genetic, <laughs> you know, uh, suffering from dementia, Alzheimer's. OK, so it's important to know and understand that this is a very important conversation because the food that we're eating today is not the food that our ancestors ate. It is not, even though it looks like it, it may even smell like it. But quite often when I have people eat real food and compare it to the food that they're eating at the supermarket, it is gravely different and people notice it. OK, instantly, like I had someone have some of the tomatoes that come off of my farm and they were like, this is crazy. This tomato tastes sweet. Yeah, tomato is a fruit. But they've never tasted a tomato that tasted like that because the food in the supermarket today is totally different. OK, so it's hugely important, not only for the conversation of how do I stop overeating so I can lose this belly fat and lose this weight and stay healthy, but also from the standpoint of understanding that the food is the new form of addiction now. It's the new drug now because the food isn't food anymore. It's freaking food, okay? So hugely important. So let's talk about what happens when you overeat. What does that lead to? It leads to obesity. We know that it will put excess body fat on you, okay? We know that without even have to, having to think about it when you overeat. But it also impairs the function of the brain as well, too. You'll notice that, you know, in, in my culture, we call it the itis. 
You notice that when you eat too much, all of a sudden you get the itis, you can't think, you can't move. You're almost in a comatose state when you overeat too much, okay? The belly is like loading you down. Yes, it's not only affecting your brain function in that moment, but it's also affecting your brain function, period, okay? Let me give you an example. You know what they call type, uh, they call Alzheimer's or dementia, they call it type three diabetes, okay? Type three diabetes because it affects the blood sugar levels and insulin in the body, it creates insulin resistance, not only in the body, but in the brain too. And the brain uses a huge amount of our glucose stores, the, the, the healthy sugar in our bodies. So when the brain becomes insulin resistant, that's why you have that brain fog. Okay, that's why you can't think because it's supposed to use that glucose for energy. But now the brain, the tissues in the brain are resistant to that being taken into the tissues. Okay, so it, it impairs brain function. Okay, it also can cause an excessive amount of gas and bloating. It also can cause a lot of fatigue, which makes sense. I said it, the itis. Also, re acid reflux. A lot of people who suffer from acid, acid reflux is because they're eating meals like they're grazing like a cow. They wake up in the morning, 20 minutes later after waking up, they have breakfast. And then they drive on to work. On the way to work, they're having a coffee, okay? They get to work, they have a snack before lunch, and then they have lunch. And then on the way home, they grab a snack, they eat a snack on the way, and then they have dinner. You have literally been grazing since you woke up in the morning, okay? So it's important to know and understand that that is going to cause the stomach to be upset because you're causing the stomach to produce a massive amount of acid, okay? And at some point, it's not going to be able to produce it anymore, and that's going to create a gas in the stomach. That's going to push up against that sphincter that blocks the acid from traveling up through the throat, and that is what's going to cause all of those symptoms that you experience from acid reflux, okay? Okay? Blood sugar and insulin dysregulation. I talked about that earlier when it happens in the brain, but it happens in the body too. Also brain fog and a whole host of other things. So overeating and especially craving these unhealthy trash foods is going to damage your health. Okay, so let's get into these eight. You know, I love the number eight. Let's get into these eight things that are causing you to overeat and crave trash foods, okay? Number one. Now, number one is a little bit tricky. Now, I wanna say, that, I wanna say this and give you this disclaimer before I say it. I love you. I do what I do because I love people. And I understand that we've been bamboozled, we've been tricked and led astray. And as a result of that, there's a lot of things that we think are good for us because the ADA, the American Diabetes Association, or the AMA, the American Medical Association, uh, the AHA, the American Heart Association, they're telling us what to eat if you have a heart attack or a stroke, what to eat if you have diabetes. And it's unfortunate that many of these diets lead you directly. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you go and look at the ADA diet for diabetics, the American Diabetes Association, if you look at the diet, and see what is on their list, there are things on that list that cause your blood sugar to go up <laughs> in spite. They are literally high glycemic index foods, foods that spike the blood sugar. So it's important to know and understand, I say this, number one, with love. I do not say it from a place of anger. I do not say it from a place of disrespect, but a lot of people are under the impression that overeating, overeating, doesn't make you fat. Actually, what makes you fat is being fat makes you overeat. I'm gonna say that again. Overeating doesn't make you fat, but being fat makes you overeat. Now you're probably asking, how does being fat make me overeat? Well, a person who was who is obese, who has excess body fat. You may look at them and think they have too much, they put too many calories, too much food, too much nourishment in their bodies. No, it's just the opposite. They are overfed and malnourished. Overfed and malnourished, meaning they consume a massive amount of calories, but didn't get a lot of nutrients in the process. Because here's the thing, 
and this is really important for this type, this conversation. If you were to eat healthy foods, real foods, whole foods, plant-based foods, real foods, one ingredient foods, if you eat them, you can't overeat them. The reason why you can't, and you'll notice this, you can overeat three number threes at you choose your drive through but if you tried to eat a big bowl of salad, you wouldn't be able to do it, okay? You would not be able to do it. Here's why. Because salad is comprised of green leafy vegetables, cucumbers, you name it, tomatoes, avocados. You put all those things in one big bowl, and guess what? There's a massive amount of fiber, and there's a massive amount of hydration in that food. And when fiber goes down into the gut, especially in the stomach, there's these little receptors in the stomach. As soon as a, this certain amount of fiber goes into the stomach, it presses against these proprioceptors and tells the body to say, you're full, okay? But here's the difference. When you're eating trash food, when you're eating food that is franken foods, these foods don't have fiber in them. Any processed food, all of the fiber has been removed. All of the nutrients have been removed and stripped away from it. That's This is exactly why they have to enrich the food with fake synthetic vitamins and minerals. So that's quite often why you'll see enriched with vitamin B12 and vitamin B9 and folate, etc. This is why you see that because the processing of the food remove all the fiber and all of the nutrients. This is why I say... Overeating doesn't make you fat, but being fat makes you overeat, okay? Because you're overfed and malnourished, okay? So you're eating a massive amount of franken food, but it has no nutrition in it, okay? And the other thing that is important is that when you're eating these foods, it's going to create deficiency. It's going to create deficiency because, again, like I told you, all of these foods have the fiber and all of the micronutrients and micronutrients pulled out of it. It's completely processed. Okay? 69% of the standard American diet is processed. And most of that is ultra processed. Means that it not only has had the fiber and the, the micronutrients and the macronutrients pulled out of it, but it also has a lot of food chemicals in it as well. Okay? So no, no true nutrition in it, only synthetic vitamins and minerals that you'll see on the side of the box. The body doesn't know how to identify these things. They're not natural. We've been growing and evolving with plants for hundreds of thousands of years. Our bodies know how to identify real food, but it doesn't know how to identify fake food. This is why eating a highly processed diet is going to create deficiency. When your body is deficient, it's going to create this craving in your body because you're so deficient in so many different areas. This is make this is what makes you overfeed, overeat. Okay. Number two, processed foods. I mean, it goes along with number one, but I had to say it out right. And I think it's important because again, we haven't properly defined what is processed foods. Because quite often when you're looking at the box bag, can, jar, you think that that is real food. But it's important to know that if you had whatever that food is and it wasn't in the box bag, can, or jar, even if it was, you know, pasta, like, but it was all natural, no chemicals in it, no preservatives, it would last for about a week, okay? You throw all these chemicals in it, it can last for a year or two or three. Okay, so it's important to know and understand that processed foods or trash diet leads to food addiction. Okay, because of the food chemicals in there that are not, on, not, not only present to preserve the food, but are also present to make you addicted to the food as well, like MSG, monosodium glutamate. Okay, so eating a highly processed diet is going to make you overeat, is going to make you crave unhealthy things and it's going to make your taste buds very immature so you'll only want those unhealthy foods and when i put something healthy in front of you it won't taste good and you won't want it okay just like a kid all right number three eating while stressed or depressed when you eat when you're stressed or depressed 
even driving a car, when you're eating while you're stressed or depressed, it will cause you to overeat. You'll notice that when you're watching a movie, driving in a car, or distressed or depressed, or have a state of anxiety and you're eating, you may have that big bag of chips and you start eating it and you probably in a normal setting would eat probably half of that and you end up eating the whole entire bag. Okay, so never eat when you're stressed and depressed. All right, number four, the number four cause of why we overeat and crave unhealthy foods, candida and yeast overgrowth in the body. Okay, next time you're home, go in the mirror, stick out your tongue. If your tongue is white and it's also coated with a with like a film, okay, that is yeast. Okay, but that yeast isn't just in your tongue, it's all over your body. But it's in your tongue because it's hijacking your taste buds. All right, it's causing you to crave not only sugar, but unhealthy carbs, refined carbohydrates like breads, pastas, pizza, etc. Okay, so a large reason why you're probably craving those unhealthy things and you're overeating is because you're not only eating for yourself, but you're also eating for this overgrowth of yeast and candida in your body as well, too. Okay. And it's probably because you've been eating a very processed diet. And as a result of eating a very processed diet, the body becomes very deficient. A lot of the good bacteria in the gut die off because it's not getting that healthy food. And the food that feeds good bacteria is fiber. And guess what? All processed food has the fiber removed from it. And because you have not been eating food with fiber, which is only in plants, now the bad bacteria and fungus can grow. That fungus being candida and yeast. Okay. All right. So it's important to know these things can not only consume the things that you're putting in your body, but they can control your taste buds too. Number five, parasites. Parasites. Especially if you're a meat eater. And I know this isn't any judgment. People always feel judged when I say something about people who eat meat. I eat meat for more than half of my life, okay? And what I will tell you is that I try to keep it in real simple with people. When you're eating meat, it's important to just think about it from a common sense standpoint. When anything dies and for you to eat meat, something has to die. Animals are designed to decay and rot and fester. And essentially that's how everybody decays and goes away from ashes to ashes to dust to dust. Okay. Now what you'll notice is it doesn't matter if it's me, a dog on roadkill or a cow or pig or a chicken. As soon as that life ends in that being and you start chopping things up, it, it begins to die, okay? That flesh doesn't stop dying just because it's been chopped up into a steak, just because it's been chopped up into a drumstick, all right? It is rotting in the same way that if anything rotted, you've seen roadkill before probably. If anything rotted, there's got to be maggots, flies, and parasites, and all kinds of things in it. And you can't stop that process, okay? Just by putting it in the freezer does not stop that process because here's the thing. You didn't chop that meat up and it went directly into your freezer. Most meat is one to two years by the time you receive it. It's been frozen and thawed out and all kind of dyes have been put into it. All kind of things have been put into it to try to maintain this dead substance to look alive and healthy, but it's just, nature just does not work like that. And so a lot of meat has parasites in it. We get parasites from our pets as well too, okay? Doesn't matter if you don't let your cat or your dog or whatever kind of animal you have lick you in the mouth, you still can get parasites. So it's really important you know and understand that parasites are a real issue when it comes to our health. Okay, and not only are these parasites the issue from the standpoint of having some kind of bug in your body, but it's also an issue because parasites eat what you eat. 
which means that they create deficiencies. That means that they're stealing nutrients from you. That also, they do the same thing as candida and yeast. They hijack your taste buds, which is really important. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But again, parasites can control your taste buds and make you crave unhealthy things. But they also make you overeat because they create deficiencies and they want more. They always want more. That's exactly what a parasite is. doesn't matter if it's a parasite in your body or an ex-friend or an ex-girlfriend, boyfriend. All right. That's what parasites do. All right. Number six, friends. How many of us have them? How many of us have friends who every time we go out to eat, they, and you want to eat something healthy, they encourage you to eat something unhealthy. How many of us have had relatives? We gone to the holiday gatherings and you decided that, hey, I'm eating different this holiday. I'm going to bring my own food, but they won't let you do it. Just have a little bit. Tempting you with the whatever. Just have a little cake. Just have a little. So a large reason why people end up overeating is because sometimes they don't have the support as well, too. All right. Sometimes they, ha I mean, our friends and family can literally be drug pushers. Because at the end of the day, you're trying to eat healthy. I mean, I've seen people who have high blood pressure, who have just suffered a stroke or a heart attack. They're in the hospital, literally just had a heart attack and a stroke. They've come to and the family is there and visiting. And guess what? They bring them church's chicken or Popeye's chicken, you name it. They bringing it up to the hospital. And that literally is what caused the heart attack or the stroke in the first place. Okay. And sometimes this is very unintentional. Most people don't make the connection between nutrition and disease in the body. But it's important to know and understand that just like anything, if you want to win in life in any area of life, you got to surround yourself with a support group. And so that doesn't, that means maybe you grab a friend who is on the same journey with you, a co-worker who's on the same journey with you, a family member who is on the same journey with you, or you can join my tribe healing community. Okay. Go to tribehealingcommunity.com, join my membership and be around other people who are like-minded on the same journey as you as well too. But it's important to know and understand you need support. Okay. And you need support because it's a mind shift. You got to shift your mind to think healthy. You got to shift your mind to have discipline, okay? Which we'll talk about in just a second, all right? So that's number six, friends and family, all right? Causing you to overeat and eat unhealthy trash food. Number seven, drinking alcohol and sugary beverages. Have you noticed when you go through a drive through window or you go to even a, a very expensive restaurant, one of the first things they want to give you is something to drink. And quite often they want to give you something sugary or alcoholic to drink. And the reason why is because the more alcohol you consume, those inhibition centers in the brain let loose and it also let loose in terms of your appetite as well too. You will consume more food than you will often consume when you're not drinking alcohol. Same thing with really sugary beverages. You'll notice that all of the fast food restaurants, at one point, they'll give you these really big goat drinks and it'll be like 99 cents for this amount of drink. You go to a gas station and you go to these gas stations, $1.29 for amount of soda like this. And the reason why it makes you overconsume food. Okay, they know that they give you the cheap stuff because think about it, a, a soda or pop, all you put in there is a, you know, some phosphoric acid and some high fructose corn syrup and a little bit of brominated vote, um, uh, bromine, and there you go. A little bit of brominated vegetable oil, voila, I got you a really cheap something that's going to make you buy all of my other products, chips candy bars, candies, hot takis, you know, like even the little hot dogs or whatever they have at the gas station too. Same thing in the drive-thru as well too. 
And so over consuming these type of beverages is going to make you overeat as well too. All right, number seven. Number eight, number eight. Number eight is going to be hormonal imbalance. And here's why. People, when they think about hormones, they typically think about estrogen and testosterone. They think that those are the only hormones in the body. No, there are many hormones on the body, many of which control your ability to either suppress your appetite or to make your appetite go crazy. And it's unfortunate that when you have hormonal imbalance in the body in one area, it's going to throw every other area off. So if your testosterone is too high or too low, I mean too low and your estrogen is too high, guess what? It's going to throw other hormones off as well. So in our in our guts, we have ghrelin and leptin, leptin, which are these balancing hormones. One causes you to want more food. The other one causes you to suppress your appetite. And guess what happens when you have hormonal imbalance? Quite often, what's going to happen is when you are nutritionally deficient, it's going to cause a hormone to go up to make you overconsume food. So all of a sudden, your ghrelin is going crazy. Crazy. So having one hormone imbalance, a thyroid issue, okay? Adrenal fatigue, testosterone too low, estrogen too high. One hormonal issue can throw all of your hormones. They work like a symphony, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give you some tips to help you on your journey, all right? Give you a few tips and then we're gonna get out of here. Number one, get rid of all of your food eating apps, okay? All right, get rid of the Uber Eats, the DoorDash, get rid of them. Here's why. In the beginning, you're not going to be making conscious decisions about your food. And the last thing you want to do is to be able to go to your phone, click on an app, and have 200 different choices of foods. That's the last thing you want. So get rid of the apps, all of them. You can bring them back slowly but surely later, but in the beginning, get rid of them, okay? Number two, cook and eat from home. Cook your own food, all right? Cooking your own food is a lost art and very few people are actually making their own food at home. The beautiful thing about cooking your own food is you can control the ingredients and what goes in it. You control what oils goes in it. You can control the fact that you can choose all of these premium foods and premium ingredients without having to worry about what the restaurant chose based upon profitability, okay? So start cooking your own food. It's been shown that people who cook and make their own food at home predominantly have leaner body masses and lose weight, all right? So cook your own food, number two. Number three, never eat stressed or when you're bored. Whenever you're stressed, whenever you're bored, do not eat, okay? Which leads me to number four, drink more water. <laughs> drink more water. When you're stressed and you're bored and you feel like you want to eat, it's probably the fact that you're actually thirsty. As a matter of fact, most of the time you think that you're hungry, you're probably thirsty. But the unfortunate thing is that your thirst sensor is off. Okay, so drink more water. Okay, most people are dehydrated anyway. So drink more water. The more water you drink, the less food you're gonna need in the first place because it's important you know like hydration is really important. And as I always tell you, the best way to get your hydration is also to eat it too. Okay, and I talked about that. Check out another video. Number five, intermittent fasting. And the reason why I say intermittent fasting is because what it's going to do for you, and I've talked about this in other videos, so you can go check that out, Dr. Bobby Price, intermittent fasting. But the reason why I think this is so important is because we were not made to graze, eat throughout the day, okay? And if you look at how our ancestors ate, three meals a day is a relatively new concept, all right? Despite what people say, Three meals a day is a relatively new concept. As a matter of fact, I do believe that concept came from the military where during the 
the, the Great Depression here in the U.S., one of the things that they were promising soldiers with it was that you would get three meals a day, which was unheard of. So it made it so attractive. So many people joined the military. OK, but the idea of three meals a day is a relatively new concept. OK, and even the idea of a supermarket is a very new concept. And so the idea of intermittent fasting, even though we have a really cool name for it, it is what we've been doing throughout our history, okay? So you're not supposed to be grazing like a cow. And the beautiful thing about intermittent fasting is that not only does it create discipline, which is a very important trait to have in terms of like disciplining yourself to eat during a specific period of time, and being able to say no to yourself when you say, I want some food, okay? Uh, that's a, a trait that is very invaluable. But the other, the other thing is intermittent fasting in and of itself, when your gut has digestive rest, when there's no food in the system because you've given yourself some opportunity to digest the food that you did have in the system, there's a ton of benefits that you get from it. Okay, again, go watch another video, check that out. You'll see all of those benefits. Number six, transition to a whole foods plant-based diet. If it ain't real, it's gonna kill you. <laughs> Eat real food. Eat real food. Don't worry about, stop worrying about your immature taste buds. Okay, but and the reason why I'm saying that is because you're not going to like any of the same way your kids, when you tell your kids to eat their peas or eat whatever it is, you know, it's healthy. I see that in adults every day. Oh, I don't like arugula. It's too bitter. OK, oh, I can't. I don't like the taste of your detox, Dr. Bobby. It's too bitter. Well, that's the taste bud that probably is the taste bud that is the highest indication of health because it triggers the body to not only release bile, but also other digestive enzymes to help process and break down your food, okay? So it's so important that we have to get to a point where we, you gotta grow up and grow beyond your immature taste buds and start eating things that you know is healthy for you just instead of triggering yourself to eat things based upon simply how they taste. Okay, I say this all the time, like if I had one, if if I made a choice in a woman or a, a woman made a choice in a man just simply based off of how they looked, I would be a foolish man and that would be a foolish woman. You look for substance, okay? That's what food is about, the substance of it, the essence of it, how it nourishes you, okay? Hugely important. Number seven, there's number seven tip, you got to detox, okay? I know you guys always, I know you're thinking to yourself like this dude with this detox. I'm saying it because it's true. Like you've been putting three meals a day in your body that is unhealthy for you in most cases. And even if you have something healthy with each meal, for most people, unfortunately, what I see is the vast majority of the rest of the meal is unhealthy. So you've been putting that in your body, creating the hormonal imbalance, drinking alcohol, you know, which I, again, no judgment, but it's important to know I, alcohol is a toxin to the body. All right. And I've talked about that at, at length. You've been creating parasites in your body, have a yeast overgrowth in your body eating while stressed, eating while depressed, and overeating at that, eating too much. It's important you know that these things just don't readily come out of the body. It's like if you put sugar in somebody's gas tank, you ruin the car. And it's very difficult to get sugar out of a gas tank. <laughs> well, it's the very same thing when you think about processed food. When you put processed food in the body, it shouldn't even be called food, but because when it goes in the body, it's very difficult to get out, which is an indication that it's not food. So you have to do something to get these toxins out of your body, this waste out of your body. OK. And detoxing, especially herbal detoxing, is a very effective way to start that process off. Now, albeit 
one of the most important things you can do is to first change and transition your diet. But after that, even a healthy diet doesn't ne ne necessarily pull out the things that our herbal detox will. Okay? The heavy metals, the mucus, the acidity. Okay? That 25 pounds of undigested fecal matter. I had somebody who was asking me, somebody asked me, well, I see vegans and some of them, you know, are overweight. And um, so they don't even look healthy. And I said, um, well, you don't know where they're at in their journey. They probably just transition their diet. I said, and secondarily, I said, it's also important to know and understand that, you know, people have been putting something in their body for 25, 30, 40 years, and they make a tra transition. It doesn't readily come out. So it's important to know that health is a journey. And one of the things that was put on this earth to help us recover and reclaim our health is the use of herbs. And so um, kills parasites, gets rid of candida, shifts your taste buds. Uh, for those of you who are watching who have, wa who have actually tried my detox, can testify to that as well too, moves the bowels, etc. Now listen, if you're watching this video right now, right now it's in the end of March, I do a group detox at the beginning of the year in January. And then I do another one in May. And the May detox, the deadline to join is April 10th. Okay. I would love to see you in there inside of the group detox. You're going to get a meal plan. You're going to get recipes. You're going to get access to a support group. We talked about how important having a support group is. Uh, you're going to get coaching by yours truly inside of the support group. You're going to get a 30 day supply of the herbal detox as well, too. And uh, you get the benefit of having that experience with me and about 500 other people. Um, so if you're in any of those spaces, either in December, so you can sign up for the January detox or in March or April, so you can sign up for the May detox or in August, so you can sign up for the September detox, then I highly suggest you join. Uh, I'll put the link in the bio below. And I'll see you inside of the group detox and on the other side of health. Peace and blessings and Godspeed.